my name is Ellen Ritchie, and I'm a physician at Weill Cornell Medical College. Um, I'm uh, what the assistant director of the leukemia program, and I take care of a lot of MPN patients. And I thought I would talk to you a little bit today about uh, the use of one of the common drugs we use in myeloproliferative disease, ruxolitinib, and how it may be a, an important treatment for the SARS-CoV-2 infection, or as you all probably know it, the COVID-19 infection that we're all preoccupied with now. Um, and many of us are staying at home and working and have changed our whole lifestyles to accommodate this pandemic. So as you know, COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 is a pandemic viral infection um, for which there's no herd immunity and there's no established therapy for right now. And the mortality rate is estimated to be between one and 3% among patients admitted to the hospital. However, the mortality rate is closer to 25%. And hypoxic respiratory failure is really the major cause of death in patients who have a SARS-CoV-2 infection. And there is a requirement for patients who develop respiratory failure. Some of them need ICU support and mechanical ventilation. And certainly in New York City, it really stretched our healthcare system here to its maximum. Um, we created new ICU space all over New York Presbyterian Hospital, including in the operating rooms and in some of our, our clinic areas. And why do people get so sick with this particular infection? Well, there are lots of things we don't know about the SARS-CoV-2 infection, but we do know that patients seem to develop a hyperinflammatory state, um, which we call, which is similar to something that we call a cytokine release syndrome. And it's characterized by elevated inflammatory markers, including IL-6, IL-1, and others, and a constellation of clinical findings. Um, among them is respiratory failure. And uh, this can lead to uh, ICU care and intubation in some particular patients. Right now, if you become ill with SARS-CoV-2 infection, the only treatment we really have to offer to you is really supportive care. Um, and uh, we are trying to find therapies both to treat the underlying virus and to treat the cytokine release syndrome, which seems to cause a lot of the morbidity and mortality in patients who have SARS-CoV-2. Many of you are familiar with roxolitinib, also known as Jacopi, which is an inhibitor of JAK1 and 2, and it's approved uh, for the use in myeloproliferative diseases, both myelofibrosis and polycythemia vera. It's also approved by the FDA to treat a complication of bone marrow transplant called graft versus host disease, which is also an inflammatory disease. Ruxolitinib has been found in all of these diseases, MF, uh, polycythemia vera, and in graft versus host disease, to reduce the clinical symptoms, as well as reduced inflammatory cytokine levels, including IL-6 and IL-1. And because ruxolitinib can block downstream signaling uh, in a broad spectrum of inflammatory mediators, it could potentially dampen the response uh, to the SARS-CoV-2 infection and prevent uh, progression to respiratory failure and de clinical deterioration that might require ICU care. Given that ruxolitinib is well known um, to patients who have MPNs, MP MPV, um, and in those patients who have chronic and acute graft versus host disease, we know a lot about the dosing. We know a lot about the toxicities of this drug. We're very familiar with how to use this drug, which also is a um, important factor in trying to find a new treatment quickly uh, for a disease which can be fatal. So what's unique about the SARS-CoV-2 infection is that there appears to be a real secondary cytokine storm that certain patients have when they're infected with this virus. And that cytokine storm actually resembles another illness called hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, also known as HLH. 
And this can be caused sometimes by other um, viral infections uh, such as Epstein-Barr um, or cytomegalovirus infections. It can be, uh, it can be uh, caused also by lymphomas and other malignancies. And it's a fulminant hyperinflammatory syndrome. Again, that's characterized by elevated cytokines and multi-organ failure. And the cardinal features of this secondary HLH um, are fever, low blood counts, an elevated um, ferritin, which is a marker of inflammation, and pulmonary involvement, including a rapid uh, uh, pulmonary deterioration um, that may result in intubation. The cytokine profile of secondary HLH is quite similar to the SARS-CoV-2 infection in patients who develop this cytokine response. And there are increased levels of cytokines like IL-2, IL-7, GCSF, uh, TNF, uh, and interferon gamma inducible protein 10. When the Chinese looked at their original data and during the Wuhan uh, epidemic, they found that an eleta- elevated ferritin and IL-6 in patients who presented with the SARS-CoV-2 infection um, really suggested uh, a, an increased risk of, of death with this infection. Um, and immunosuppression has thought perhaps to be helpful in the treatment of SARS-CoV-2 infection since it sur- first surfaced in China. Um, so drugs such as anakinra, which is a drug used to treat um, inflammatory rheumatoid arthritis type conditions or autoimmune diseases, was used, for example, extensively in Italy uh, to try and treat those patients who had the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Steroids were tried in both uh, China and Italy, um, thought perhaps to be associated with higher mortality in the Chinese data. Um, There also are drugs that are specifically designed to treat elevated IL-6, which are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, including tocilizumab um, and seroluzumab. Um, These have been used also to treat the inflammatory storm incited by the SARS-CoV-2 infection. But recent data looking at one of these IL-6 inhibitors looks like it really is not so effective in treating patients who have this inflammatory um, response. So why might ruxolitinib, a drug that we use to treat MPNs, work in the SARS-CoV-2 infection? There's evidence to suggest that ruxolitinib actually is a potent inhibitor of this inflammatory cascade, which drives um, some patients to have the poor outcome with the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And ruxolitinib has actually been used uh, in a pilot trial to treat patients with this similar condition, secondary HLH. Um, There have been case reports of patients responding uh, to ruxolitinib who had second secondary HLH, as well as one small open label um, single single center pilot trial. In that trial, they looked at five patients with secondary HLH and the endpoint was two months survival. Um, And survival is very poor in this particular disease. So two months survival was thought to be a victory. In this trial, two month survival was actually 100% and the resolution of the disease associated associated symptoms was seen in all five patients. Uh, There was only one adverse event, which was something called febrile neutropenia, um, but the patient um, did well with antibiotic therapy and survived. Improvements um, in inflammatory markers such as IL-2 and ferritin as well as T-cell and monocyte activation were observed following this treatment. And the trial has led to a much larger trial um, using ruxolitinib and as secondary HLH, and this is ongoing. Um, Again, this is encouraging uh, information that This drug has been very successful in secondary HLH, which looks quite similar to the immune response patients have to the SARS-CoV-2 infection, which means that ruxolitinib might be a very promising drug for this cytokine storm incited by the SARS-CoV-2. There's also evidence that ruxolitinib might directly inhibit the SARS-CoV-2 virus. 
Um, there is a um, artificial intelligence uh, group which um, actually looked at a series of algorithms to enable potential uh, targets and potential therapies in patients who have this inflammatory response to the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Um, and they found uh, that drugs such as uh, ruxolitinib may be actually helpful antiviral agents, um, that they target members of the numb associated kinase, kinase family, which is called NAC, um, which are using those as tar new medications that target that particular family of kinases, you may have an antiviral infect effect. And ruxolitinib as a JAK inhibitor has some activity against one of these um, non-associated kinase family proteins and may actually have an antiviral activity in patients who have SARS-CoV-2 infection. So based on the potential uh, for uh, ruxolitinib to work as an agent against those patients who have an inflammatory reaction to the SARS-CoV-2 infection, we've initiated a trial, which is a phase two trial at Weill Cornell Medical uh, uh, College to uh, evaluate the safety, feasibility, and efficacy of using ruxolitinib in hospitalized patients with SARS-CoV-2 infection. And these would be patients who are sick enough with respiratory failure to be admitted to the hospital, but not so sick that they need to go to the ICU and to be intubated. And the goal of the treatment would be to try and head off the cytokine storm and prevent patients from being admitted to the ICU and to, have to require mechanical ventilation. Um, there are two trials that are upcoming um, from Novartis uh, Insight um, that are both phase three randomized trials. So the first will be um, phase three trial comparing ruxolitinib to the best available treatments in hospitalized patients who have, have respiratory failure but are not sick enough to come to the ICU uh, and not sick enough uh, to need mechanical intub intubation to see if you can head off that trajectory of events that lead to ICU care. There will be a second clinical trial in patients who are intubated um, with uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection to see if you can improve that cytokine storm, improve the respiratory failure, and to get patients off a ventilator and have a better overall survival um, if they have this disease. So these are the ongoing efforts looking at using ruxolitinib uh, to treat the SARS-CoV-2 infection. One thing we don't really know about MPM patients, if you are on ruxolitinib or you're on interferon or you're on one of these anti-inflammatory type medications, does it help protect you from getting really sick with the SARS-CoV-2 infection? And we don't really know the answer to that question yet. Um, we're going to have to, when this is all um, uh, settled down, really ask our patients who have MPNs whether or not they've had the SARS-CoV-2 infection um, and whether they became so sick that they needed hospital care, ICU care, or mechanical ventilation. We'll have to see how many MPN patients actually have died of the SARS-CoV-2 infection who have been on agents that are... Um, immunosuppressive such as ruxolitinib or interferon. I'm extremely interested in looking at these questions. Um, and since this has been such an overwhelming um, experience in New York, I'm in close touch with my MPN patients to know how well uh, they have done during this pandemic. Um, and it will be a focus of my research over the next year. Thank you so much for your attention and please say, stay safe. Um, you know, use uh, your masks, uh, wash your hands uh, and practice social distancing a until we have uh, this epidemic under control and uh, hopefully that we have a vaccine or treatments that will make this uh, infection much less deadly.